when you make a new connection between two things does that then create a new third thing which you can then make connections between like does yes. is, is it actually true that the theory of knowledge works by making connections between things would you say that's an accurate representation uh, well of what i we do? i mean again if i knew the exact answer to that question i could make an agi but uh i'm i'm fairly sure i mean i i i, I can't think of a alternative to the process being uh, rearranging existing things and m mutating different things, m m mutating existing things. So you can either change a, a, a theory slightly in the hope that the rest of it still works and that it, that it still, uh, you know, uh, or you can make new combinations between things. That's also the two things, that the two ways that um, biological mutations can happen in DNA. You can either have a cosmic ray strikes the DNA and it changes one base pair or something, or you can have some error in copying results in a bit of DNA that came from somewhere else being stuck into a particular place in the DNA strand. That, so. so this sounds like random variation of one thing rather than a new connection between two things? Well, no, the, um, the second process is in a way a new connection between two things because it, it, if there's a whole bit of DNA in a different organism or in a different part of the DNA and it gets copied, as it were, into the wrong place in the evolving organism, and that's a way that evolution can take place. Most instances of that just kill the organism. But every so often, it either leaves the functionality unchanged or makes it better. So what does that have to do with connecting? If, if a dog gets a piece of DNA from a lobster, then that creates a, a similarity between dogs and lobsters that didn't exist before. And people can... Uh, it, paleogeneticists or whatever they're called can look at DNA. Um, bacteria do this a lot. Higher organisms do it less and less because I think basically because um, there's, there's less and less chance of you surviving such a thing. For it to be part of evolution you've got to be able to survive the new adaptation being slightly there and a bit more there and a bit more there because Giving a dog lobster claws wouldn't work because the machinery for controlling the claws and deciding when to use them and so on hasn't been transferred. It would have to evolve. The point is that human new explanations evolve intentionally. They, are, they, are, they involve randomness at some level. But the business part of creating the new explanation is what happens to the randomness after it's generated. And it is changed and ch further changed intentionally to solve a problem. And that is what induction can't possibly do. But we don't know what can do it. Induction can't make a change to solve a problem. Yes. But evolution both genetic and evolution of ideas in the mind can? Well, no, it, it can... So every new genetic uh, sequence is produced first and tried out later. So it's Lamarckism. Lamarckism thinks that um, a... a an organism's environment uh, and its own actions can cause a change in its, in its genome. And that can't happen. And it couldn't happen because it's the same as induction, which also can't happen. Is, so is this also true within a mind? Like you, you have to make up something before you can tell whether it solves the problem or not. Yes, but th there's a difference, which is that the making up process isn't purely random. How so? For example, a human 
can do the thing which I just said the dog and the lobster can't do. A human can think of the, the solar neutrino problem and can think, could it be that there's a new particle that isn't even a neutrino? And um, what, what would that particle... Now, that, that in itself is not the explanation, but it's, it's, the, it's the germ of an explanation. Wouldn't you have to have that germ of an explanation be like made up before you can check whether that's a good question? Yes, but it that making up that involves uh, much less random trial and error than it would that it would take to try all possible variations randomly. So the fact that a person can think of that can think of an analogy. You know, some people think that human thinking is all about analogies. So we, we can take a whole idea from some other place and see if it fits in this place, which it never does immediately. But then you can say, well, how can we change it further so it does fit? So a person who thought, well, maybe there's a wholly new particle involved. At some point, that person may say, maybe that wholly new particle is just a neutrino, but of a different type. And then they're well on the way to solving. Of course, there are many other considerations. But when I say many, it's nothing compared with how many you'd have to check through by random variation or by trying every possibility or whatever. Why is it not the case that you need to do this random thing by producing the idea first and checking it afterwards? Or are you saying that you can do that? Um... Human minds produce conjectures, raw conjectures, much more efficiently than any either systematic search or random search. And we don't know why? We don't know how. Okay, we don't know how. So, for example, chess playing engines um, have, to, have to search through billions of times more possibilities than chess grandmasters do. Or they apparently do? No, it, it's impossible that, that... Well, unless there's something in the hardware of the human brain that we don't know about. What if it's but, like super parallel? Yeah, well, it would have to go through billions of times more processing than we think it can, which would mean it would have to be billions of times more efficient thermodynamically than we think it is. I mean, we don't know. We don't know how the brain works either, let alone... Do we know this for biological evolution, as in do we know how they... Like, biological evolution is as efficient as it is? Because I thought that we couldn't very well program yeah. bi biological evolution. Yeah, well, we can't. But And that the analogue of that program... that of that problem does exist, but it's not as severe a problem as it is for thinking. Although computer simulations of biological evolution aren't very good, they're not complete rubbish. They, they do sort of mimic evolution a bit. Um, and I think it's a mystery, uh, you know, wh why real evolution is that much better. But... I don't think that real evolution is that much better by that much. Um, it's not a factor of billions. It's, you know, there, there's something missing that makes it chug along inefficiently rather than efficiently. I don't think it's the same problem. Um, although it is the same in one respect. People who do biological evolution, simulate biological evolution on computers seem blind to this problem, seem to me to be blind to this problem in the same way that that uh, people who are trying to make AGI out of AIs are blind to the difference between those two. So, because they have the wrong epistemology? Yeah, but I, I don't know what the answer is. I know one misconception they have in the case of AGI, which by itself makes it impossible for them to create an AGI. Namely the thing about prediction? namely the thing about induction being impossible. Uh, with biological evolution, I, I don't know like what it would take 
to make an analog of biological evolution on a computer. Of course, I'm sure it can be done. My guess is that it, it will, people will do it and it will be relatively simple to do once someone has had the idea of what biology does. There are various um, apparently indicative things in biology of the same biological structure occurring in evolutionarily very distant organisms. Um, like, uh, I, I think the, the famous one is that there's a gene involved in the development of the eye, which is and the same gene is found in different eyes that work by completely different physical principles. So it's not that they have a common origin, unless the common origin is something so deep in history that Con we don't recognize it as being eyes. Convergent evolution. Yes, but it's convergent evolution without an apparent reason. Ah, is that different from convergent evolution? Yeah, yeah. So the convergent evolution is that things in the same environment tend ah. to end up with the same appearance, the same lifestyle, gotcha. and so on.